In this video, we're going to look at multiplying radicals that have the same index. So remember the components of a radical expression here are the radical itself, which is this sort of check marky sign, the index, which is the little number tucked in here in the upper left, and then the radicand, which is whatever is underneath the radical sign. So we're going to be specifically looking at multiplying radicals that have the same index. In a different video, we'll talk about what to do if they have a different index. So there's a rule here that's going to guide our way, and that rule is if you have a radical with an index of n times another radical with that same index of n, you can combine these guys together into one radical expression and multiply the two radicands together. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and then we can simplify from there. All right, so let's look at a couple examples. Let's start off with the easiest example, which is square root 6 times square root 6. Now remember, with square roots, the index is not written. And when the index is not written, it's assumed to be 2, meaning a square root. Well, what does this rule tell us we can do? It tells us we can combine this to one radical with 6 times 6 underneath it. And so we get the square root of 36, which is 6. Now, you might have noticed here a little shortcut, square root 6, square root 6. Square root 6 times square root 6 could also be written as the square root of 6 squared. And when you have a square root and you're squaring it, your answer is going to come out to be whatever's under the radicand, assuming this is defined, right? If this was a negative under here, it would be undefined. All right, let's look at another one. What if we have the square root of 10 times the square root of 5? Well, let's follow our rule. So we combine these together, and you don't have to show this second step here. I know you guys can do 10 times 5 in your head, but I'm just showing it as showing the rule, what I'm doing to combine these together. That's it. Easy peasy, right? Okay, you think you're done? Great. But remember, with radicals, you have to simplify them. So we need to think about if there's any perfect square factors that go into 50. And there are 25 times 2 is 50. Now we're using this rule sort of in reverse. We're going to split that radical back up. And you may have used this rule to simplify radicals. And the square root of 25 is 5. So we end up with the answer 5, radical 2. Now, I love to actually check my answer. We can see what is the actual decimal approximation of 10 times the square root of 5, and then the decimal approximation of 5, radical 2. If I did this correctly, it should be the same value. All right, let's check it out. So come over here, and we'll go um, square root 10 times square root 5. And the decimal approximation for that is 7.07. .07. All right, now we're going to do 5 times the square root of 2. Same exact decimal approximation. That tells me that at, I'm simplified it at least correctly so far. I don't know for sure that it's completely simplified, because if I would have stopped right here at square root 50 and checked that decimal, I would have also got 7.07. .07. The key is, as you're simplifying, you're not changing the value of the expression. So that's always a good way to check your answers. Let's try some examples that have a different index besides 2. Let's try the cubed root of 18 times the cubed root of 12. So neither of these are perfect cubes. Nothing cubed is 18 and nothing cubed is 12. So I'm going to combine these together. 18 times 12. Let's see, what is 18 times 12? Let's go figure that out. I think that's 216. All right, so the cubed root of 216, I think I recognize that. 6 times 6 times 6, I believe. So the cubed root of 216 is 6, and we could simplify it that way. Now we could also check that on our calculators as well, but um, that's a good way to just check and see if you have it right. Okay, um, let me show you one where it does have perfect cubes. Let's say you had something like the cubed root of 8. What's another perfect cube? 27? 
So if I had the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 27, I probably wouldn't want to multiply these together because the cube root of 8 is 2 and the cube root of 27 is 3. So I could just stop there and, and say that that's 6. Now if I wanted to, I could combine them together. 8 times 27 and 8 times 27 8 times 20 is 160, 8 times 7 is 56, and 160 plus 56 is 216. So if you did multiply them together, you would still get the correct answer. Let's try a couple more. How about the cubed root of 4 times the cubed root of 4? Maybe pause the video and try this one, see what you come up with. All right, well, hopefully you recognize that 4 is not a perfect cube. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply these together and get 16. And if you check your calculator, that's going to these are going to be equivalent in their decimal approximation, so you probably think you're done. But here's the deal. We still have to simplify this. And so we're looking for a perfect cube that goes into 16. So remember your perfect cubes. This one doesn't really help us when we're simplifying radicals because everything has a factor of 1. But 2 cubed is 8. And 8 is a factor of 16. So I can split this 16 up into 8 times 2. And then I can split this radical up into the cubed root of 8, the cubed root of 2. And I want to do that because the cubed root of 8 simplifies. That's a perfect cube. So I get 3 times the cubed root of 2. And that would be the simplified answer. Let's do one more. How about the fifth root of 9 times the fifth root of 27? Now, I'm going to show you a little trick here to kind of help, you know, if you don't have a calculator. Fifth roots are a little bit tough, but here we've got 9 and 27. Maybe you don't recognize your fifth roots, but hopefully you recognize 9 as 3 to the second and 27 as 3 to the third. So now when we're multiplying these together, we're going to do 3 to the second times 3 to the third. And I see I have the same base, right? So what's 3 to the second times 3 to the third? 3 to the, 3 to the what? 3 to the fifth, right? Add the exponents. So now remember, the fifth root is asking me what to the fifth power is 3 to the fifth? What to the fifth power is 3 to the fifth? Well, that's 3, right? 3 to the fifth power is 3 to the fifth. If you've worked with fractional exponents, you could rewrite this as 3 to the fifth to the, what's the exponent that goes with the fifth root? What exponent is that? Do you remember? That is the 1 fifth power. And then you could multiply these two exponents together. 1 fifth times 5 is 1, and that's another way to get 3. You could also think of it that way. All right, well, remember this rule when you're dealing with multiplying radicals with the same index. And remember, this only works for the same index. If it's a different index, you're going to have to do a different way, which we'll show in another video.